um, with the Latin Assassin. Latin Assassin, uh, you actually wrestled twice today, and I see you're, you're carbo loading as we speak. Um, now, you're in a best of three series today, and you got one more to go. A any, any thoughts on your prior matches? Well, I took him out the second one. He got me the first one, but he can't get me. I'm the best thing there is right now. <sighs> okay, um, so the first match, was it uh, no DQ or false count anywhere, or what was the stipulation? Because I noticed you guys went to the floor at one point in time. That was a no false count anywhere match, so it was what it was. And then the second match was obviously submission, which you, you got the Duke in that one. Oh yes, I did. I made him cry like a baby. Exactly what he is, exactly what I'm going to do to him in the next one. Okay, so I noticed he was kind of limping off. Um, so obviously he's, he's kind of a, a wounded animal at this time. Is that something you're going to seek out in the upcoming match? Actually, let me ask this next question. What's the next stipulation? Well, the next stipulation is two things. Me getting in that ring and pinning him. And that's it. I mean, there was a stipulation for each of the other ones. I thought it was something similar to like an Eddie Gilbert or Cactus Jack where they had, you know, three stages of hell type type thing. I mean, or that guy, we, we, there's no, you know, there's nothing we can do with him. He's nothing but a redneck and I'm ready to get him. I just can't wait. This piece is good. But it is. It's rather tasty. Um... So, you know, you're taking a little breather here. You're going to refocus. Um, you're trying to get it, you know, not, maybe not thinking about a game plan just because the pizza's so good. Can I ask what type of pizza you're eating? No, that's, that's fine. Sure. I'm sure. On a diet. Um, I, I see that. Um, so, so, I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you for asking, though. I appreciate that. You're the first to ever ask me on, on camera if I want to slice a piece, so I appreciate that. A very polite individual. I wouldn't have guessed that a Latin assassin would be this polite, but here we are. So, how... Sorry, I'm a little flustered right now. I'm trying to avoid myself. Uh, how... Uh, You're flustered. How Why would you interview sorry? a guy while he's eating frickin' pizza? Individual. Seems like there's a lot of, like, Street thugs, uh, you know. Here, how, how do you stand out? Why, like, why are you an assassin when guys are street brawlers? Like, what makes you an assassin? I see why you're Latin, but what makes you an assassin? The assassin part, because hmm, I get in the ring and I take care of business. That's all. That's all I got to say. Because that's one thing you know about assassins is they take care of business. And they like pepperoni pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing next to a young man who started his journey in professional wrestling, but he already has a name, something to call himself as he takes his first steps in professional wrestling. I'm standing next to a man, you've probably already guessed his name, a man by the name of Nightmare. Nightmare, how are you doing today on this sunny day? Good. Man of many words, as you can see. So, Nightmare, can you kind of tell me your training and your background and how you got into professional wrestling? Right now, I ain't training yet. Well, you're not training yet, but you have a name. Oh, fantastic. Because it's very, but people may, may say you're going about it the wrong way, but you don't understand. You're actually going about it the right way. Because it's much more important to figure out a way to brand yourself. Now, do you, do you have an entrance already kind of in mind? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Well, I think you need to work on that a little bit. Because of the, because it's about entrance, branding, character, and then we worry about what happens with you in the ropes, correct? I mean, tr trust me. Um, now, let's talk about in between the ropes. Who have you signed up to start training with? Spanish the Fly Angel. Mm -hmm. Spanish the Fly Angel. Okay. Um, so... I'm guessing Spanish it's fly is a cool, down, cool guy to me. He's good to go, correct? Yes. And have, have, so have you started just driving him around and that's kind of the beginning of your training or we haven't even got to that level yet? 
Yes. Okay. Um, also, have you got any gear ideas? I mean, that's that's very important. But like I said, probably more important than the wrestling, as we, we find out many times. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. These are, these are some things we really need to put together. Trust me, I'm, I'm a professional. And I know a place where you can get some good gear that would fit with what you're trying to go with, whatever it may be. Um, now, I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity here to talk to some wrestling fans. That they may know. I know it's scary. It's okay. I, I, I don't like talking to them either that much. But uh, here's your opportunity to sell yourself. Why you're going to be the next big star. Why should people, when they see your debut, why should they care about you? Why should they care when they see the debut of Nightmare? Why should they care? Have fun. Because you have fun. Well, I thought Nightmare on Elm Street was a fun movie, but apparently Nightmare in the Ring may also be a fun movie to see as well. I'm standing here uh, in uh, the office of Cyanide. Uh, Cyanide, can you just kind of give me a little background on yourself? I saw you do a run-in on an earlier show, so I'm trying to you know, figure out your whole... What's going on inside your head? I mean, you just saw, you just did a run in on, on a, on a match with Gmo versus Alcoholic versus Eight Ball and Shadow, and, and all men got bloody and beating each other with trash cans. It was a mess. It was, it was rumpus. It, it was a slobber knocker, if you will, or if I'm allowed to use that. But you decided to come in and stick yourself in the fray. Now most people, you know, would be feel uncomfortable even watching that. But you interjected yourself. Can you tell me why? I'm a young blood, and basically picking my spots. I don't care who it is. Between GMO, I don't care who. Okay, so, so now, as a result of your altercation, uh, do, you, do you find yourself wrestling on the second show and, and, and possibly taking up some of your aggression and, and earning the spot instead of picking your spot? Well, yeah, I do. I probably will, basically, coming up on the show and everything else. And what everybody's going to see is a new cyanide. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. Okay, well, I, I think cyanide's a chemical compound, so there's only one version of it. Uh, maybe like a new calcium. I mean, but I may be mistaken. I'm no chemist. But um, can you kind of tell me your background uh, in uh, you know, professional fighting? Professional wrestling? Well, a lot of my family has been in military back, I have basically a military background, my uncles and everybody else. And what about yourself? Do you have a military background? Uh, no, I basically love wrestling ever since I was sitting out in front of the TV and I did it ever since. I used to take my own pencils, you know, and basically use them as wrestlers to fight with each other. You said pencils? Number, number two pencils? Uh, there are two pencils. And, and, and were the, like the number 2.5 pencils, the ones you couldn't use in the basic skills, were they like the heels of your little federation? Well, I just did it. I was like maybe eight, nine years old. And, you know. Were the me mechanical pens, like the guys were all juiced up that didn't know how to like, you know, you know work properly? Uh, no, uh, teacher just took it away from me because I kept on doing it. Oh, so you never even got past the opener. Um, you never got past the 40-minute promo. Okay. No, I just I just did it for a while. Then when I was fourteen, went down to Cal Street, did backyard wrestling. I won seventeen straight matches. Seventeen straight matches at backyard wrestling, folks. We're looking at at a borderline icon right now. And also was the number one contender for the Cal for down at Cal Street Mansfield. But the owner, you know, pussied out, ran off because I was basically whooping the living hell out of all his rosters. See, the, you know, that's a, that's a common side of backyard wrestling that you don't see is all the politics be behind the scenes or inside the mom's kitchen um, that you don't necessarily see in backyard wrestling. So um, I thank you for bringing that to light. But now you find yourself as a professional here, yeah. um, standing before us today as a professional. 
Um, what are your career goals as a professional? Be the best, like everybody else. Be the best, go to the next level. Now, now what's your plan of attack at being the best? You can say it, but what's your plan of attack? Well, just watch and learn. Do you want me to watch and learn, or do you watch and learn, and that's how you become the best? A little bit of both. Okay. I, th I think I follow you. I think I follow you. Well, uh, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to say about yourself? You seem like a, a unique individual, and I, I want to peel you apart layer by layer, and I don't want to give the fans too much cyanide, because that'll kill you. So uh, we're just gonna give, we just want to give you a taste of cyanide. So uh, I just want, want you to leave the fans with something that they, the lasting impression of cyanide. You're looking at the new world heavyweight champion. That is all. World heavyweight champion of, of any uh, banker promotion that isn't afraid, and also any world heavyweight champ of any wrestling promotion that can take a taste of cyanide. Okay, Jake Manning here once again with the intriguing and mysterious individual known as, oh, hold on, okay. sorry, okay. we'll start again, that's fun, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here with the intriguing and mysterious Volcano Jr., Volcano Jr., uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, can you kind of tell me, oh, uh, you speak, speak English, yes, yes, I did. Most luchadors uh, speak Spanish, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, well, you know, my family, all from Port San Juan, Puerto Rico. It was my uncle's gimmick. It was my uncle's suit, the family outfit. I inherited it after wrestling for about two years, so don't know that, that much Spanish. So <laughs> I'm the newer generation of the, of the volcano. So. Now, now, can you tell me the lineage of, of the volcanoes? Like... Like if you're talking about Puerto Rico, so they they were big in Puerto Rican wrestling. Can you kind of tell me what it means? Like if you were to go to Puerto Rico and, and like I'm Volcano Junior, how would they be like? Oh, you want big money in you? Is that what they would say? Uh, you know, Volcano was my uncle was a very, very mean individual. He was, he was very, very solid, very rough. I don't know if they if they welcome me with open arms back in Puerto Rico. You mean you mean you mean backstage? Backstage? I mean, was he just a bad individual to do business with? Oh no, he was he was very, very mean spirited in the ring. You know, he was, he wasn't wasn't the fan favorite. He didn't get the Brody treatment, did he? No, no, okay. not the Brody treatment. No, no. Make sure to clarify. Um, so, you know, a, a very unique. Colors and a unique mask. I hope, hope we can get a good shot of him with this. It's a very, very colorful mask. Um, you know, I, m most people don't understand about branding, but of course, you know, mask guys are, are ahead of the game in branding. Um, ha have you found it easier to uh, get over with, with the crowd as a mask wrestler? Well, you know, the, the fans, the, especially the kids, they love, I mean, they love the superhero. You know, that's that's what you are to them. You are, you are the superhero of the ring. Hence why you're wearing Under Armour. It's well, see, it, if a, suit. I've got a whole body suit to oh, go with it. I got a cape. Oh, I I mean, I go out there and you know I get the kids to dance with me. Mm -hmm. horns at you. That horns that at doesn't you. sound good, buddy. We, when when I go out there, it's all about the fans. It's all about having fun. Have everyone dance with me, and it, it ends up being a blast. Like I said, it's a little, it's a different take on the Volcano Junior side. It's because he's the most hated man in Puerto Rico, but here in Cleveland, he's the most loved person. You know, he was in Cleveland too. He was a former CWA tag champ. I mean, he, he did he did wrestle here, and he wasn't liked very much when he wrestled here either. So he. Now, was there ever a mask versus mask or a mask versus hair? Or with Volcano Senior, Volcano you... has Volcano Senior did have a few times when he put his mask on the line. Never lost it. Never lost it. Never mask. lost it. And, I, and I'm never. And I'm hoping. Ever... I've had people try to take my mask, but you know what? It hasn't happened yet. And I hope to God it doesn't happen because it's the family honor. It's resting right here. Yeah, I noticed you. You walked in wearing the, the, this mask. You know. You know. 
not a lot of people pay attention to details, you know, mass wrestlers just walk in and go about there, you know, through the crowd. I've seen ma many, many, many people. It seems like you really do live the volcano uh, lifestyle. You have to. No one, no one's going to see me without my mask. I come to shows with the mask during the show. After the show, I leave with the mask. This is part of me, and this is how you're always going to see me. And what about in the grocery store? Do you wear that in the grocery store? Grocery store, you know what? Sometimes I do, as long as I'm far enough away. But you know what? It's, it's, well, let's say let's say you are on your way way to the show. Would you be wearing that as you're as you're driving to the show? Yes, and I put my glasses on. Oh, right? so, so you have you have glasses on over top of the mask. I don't have contacts? Yes. If I'm driving, I got the glasses inside the mask. Okay. Do you get into any usual stairs? Do you cause any accidents? Stairs all the time. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. Oh no, no! I just wrestled at German Fest, and when we were, when we were going, because Germans hate Puerto Ricans. It's, <laughs> it, it's true, and everyone was staring at me. Everyone was looking at me funny, you know, walking through the festival with the mask on. It's what has to happen. I keep the mask at all times. Now, what are some other mask wrestlers that uh, maybe you consider as a, a peer? Now, I'm not gonna say role models because obviously you have a, a very uh, long lineage uh, and distinct reputation in the business. Um, would you look to someone like an El Generico or someone like a Rey Mysterio or a Sin Cara? Maybe, maybe in a mask wrestler you could really like watching the old old school seventies no mask ricks and those because they really embodied the whole superhero supervillain role and they they you know no mask has never taken his mask off yet he's he's one of the legends. I, I love what the guys are doing now. I love the Sin Cara and the Rey Mysterio. Was that the type of style we're going to see from you tonight? I do the more old school. I am more well, your old school brother. Old school brother. Oh yeah. Brother. I am old school. I'm gonna hit you with the arm drags and the rolls and everything like that. That's what I do. Well, brother, thank you so much. Thank I you very really much. It, <laughs> All right. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Take okay, it easy. From from what I hear, you're you're a young upstart in the Cleveland area. Can you just kind of tell me about yourself a little bit? Um. Well, my, it's actually, I used to go by my middle name, which is Warren, and I used the moniker Chaos because uh, Chaos is described as uh, a state of randomness, and uh, I really fell in love with that because I have ADD, I'm OCD, and, uh, you know, like, I'm really off the walls, <laughs> like, I mean, hops off everywhere, so I'm really very random in, in general, honestly, so I decided that was really perfect to, you know, try to get a name out there. When starting up is chaos. Quite interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that, and, and I do applaud you for uh, taking a handicap and taking a negative and turning it into a positive. Oh, well, uh, a very, very courageous individual. And it takes it takes a lot of courage out there to step in a wrestling ring. Um, can you kind of tell me how that came about? How you first got into your training? Um, honest to God, training it took a while because. Honest to God training. Yeah, not, training. training. Not, 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 not yeah. something like, you know, in your mom's living room or something. But honest to God training. Yes, like, uh, like contract signings and uh, payments and setting up rings, tearing down rings week after week, you know, you know, working, working. Um, that started... Um, wrestling, wrestling, if you prefer. Yes. Um, that started maybe a couple months ago. I was, uh, well, actually a year ago, I was lucky enough to run into my current trainer through another friend of mine, and before that I had no real contacts or, I was just kind of like going to shows, and like I was like really shy about everything, I didn't really feel comfortable talking to people, and eventually... Because of your disability or just insecurities and stuff? It just didn't scare you to that, like I just feel weird when I try to talk to people a lot, you know, plus like I really do kind of like go off on random things and I say odd things all the time, so... Like, my friend that I was really close to, he was all like, well, you know, I know this guy, and, like, he does this and this, and, you know, he's trying this guy, and I was like, all right, well, like, let me see what I can do, and, you know. What was the example? What was it when he said he trained this guy? Who was the guy that he trained, like, oh, if he trained that guy? Uh, uh, God, it's like, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, um, but he is currently in the WWE. Oh, very impressive. Yes. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say his name. I know how a lot of the stuff that goes to... The, this person, you really can't mention too many names around it. Like, I know a lot of people recently in the area who have moved up to the WWE and, of course, or TNA, and they've had to change names. And, you know, it's very iffy, unless it was yes, a we product do, already we, out. We definitely don't want to in, infringe on anybody's copyrights here at $5 Wrestling. We have a small legal team, so. 
Um, but, you know, like, so I heard about that, and I've seen a lot of his shows. He puts on a lot of shows. He owns this ring right here. Um, and that's why we're using, hey, that's why I'm here today, because, you know, paying my dues as uh, trying to be a wrestler, I came with him, put it together. I'm leaving here with this ring. I'm taking it all down, everything, and next weekend, same thing all over again. And a lot of people would think that that's, like, hard work or something. And, yeah, at times it can be, because this ain't easy. But I love this business. I love being in it. I love doing it every time. And, like, I'm really lucky, really lucky to have met the man who's training me because he's an amazing wrestler himself. And uh, he's just going to make me even better. than like, Because I have my own personal goals. Like, I'm honestly, this is going to sound weird. I don't want to go to the WWE. Like, it's weird. Um, I guess I'll, I'll say it, but, like, my personal goal as a wrestler would be to make it to Ch uh, Chikara Pro. That's, well, I really love what they do and how they do it. Like, and that well, why so? Why so? What, what, what makes them so special that, as you, um, Warren Chaos, saying, you know what, I don't want to see my name in Madison Square Garden. I would like to see my name in a, or Reading, Pennsylvania somewhere. What, why is that? What is it? Mm -hmm. For me, it's a bunch of guys like my age, most of them, period. And they do a lot of innovative things. They're constantly thinking of things. Like Mike Quackley Bush, I consider him like a genius. Like, I really look up to him because he has a really good technical style and he comes up with some missions out everywhere. And I love to do that too. Like, just come up with new ways to, you know, stretch somebody's arm and tear it out of the socket and all that. Um, and then just really just it's amazing. I love watching all their shows. I get all their, I have all their DVDs so far. They recently had a three day event. I have I already got those. <laughs> um, just what they do, like they throw in everything, like high flying, everything, big strong style. Which strong style like in this area is pretty big too. Like we're really into the strong style of wrestling, like eighties wrestling. Well and of course you're also in somewhat of a young boy situation setting up the ring, wrestling, paying your dues. So it kind of all relates and correlates. So, and so with with Chicago Pro, I want to go there because they uh, they attract personalities that are just big, big, and they all have something very specific to offer, and they do very specific things like throwing imaginary grenades and blowing people up. Like that's hilarious to me. I would love to be in a situation like that and do something completely hilarious. And another thing I would love to do would definitely be beyond wrestling. And I don't know if you've heard about that. They're on YouTube. Um, they're great. And they're wrestling for wrestlers. There's no audience except for other workers, you know? And there are other people that it's innovative. They're trying to do new things and try new things. And they're doing it for each other, not just to impress the millions. They want to, like, say, hey, I saw you do this thing one time. Like, I came up with this really crazy idea. Let's try this. You know, I really love innovative wrestling and all that, and that's why I want to do that in Shikara, and I really hope I can. Like, it's really my goal, and that's why, like, I don't see the WWE having all that to offer me. Like, money, money, crazy money, but... Who needs money these days? Who needs money these days, really, honestly? Obviously, obviously not me, no, no, no. <laughs> um, why, 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 why have money when you can throw imaginary grenades? Yes, yes, imaginary grenades. Well, well, I must tell you this, uh, you know, you, with you being on $5 Wrestling, another innovative group, Upstart, um, probably haven't heard about us yet, uh, judging by the I, fact that, I know. Just, the fact, just the fact that you're here, obviously shows you may not know that much about $5 Wrestling. But anyways, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to thank you so much for your courage and, and coming out and, and, you know, it takes a real man to come out and admit who you are and, and admit where you are in life. So I just I can't, I can't thank you enough for for, for thank you. So uh, you gonna be on the second show tonight? Um, well, right now I don't know, but See, it's all up in the air. The life the life of the young boy. You might have to you know you know go to the shower room or lace up somebody's boots or do something. You're there. Gmo's gonna put you on the second I show. I just be here. I just love watching wrestling. Like people get on you about that a lot of times. Like you're peeking out a little like hole in the screen in the back area and trying like catch every moment of it. I'm still like that. I love seeing every moment of wrestling, every single second. And being a referee, that's where you get the best thing, because you're in the ring. You see, you're in there with professionals, yes. and you're learning from, from that. Absolutely. Like, I can recall matches with Joint the Clown, well, one of the many. Joint the Clown is an excellent person to learn from. And, like, he, you know, while in the ring, you know, he was helping me then, you know, and making me laugh because he's Joint the Clown and making fun of Hillbillies and stuff. But, <laughs> You know, so 
uh, it's really great. And um, did you have anything else? Uh, no, uh, I mean, I, I just kind of let you go and let your let your handicap become my uh, advantage. So uh, I w I just like no, I, like I said, you're a wonderful young man, and I wish you nothing but the but the best. So thank you for very much being on Five Dollar Wrestling, and hopefully one day uh, you achieve all your goals and dreams. I really sincerely mean that. Want to pay attention. <laughs> I do have a Twitter account, and that's oh, you're where, Twitter? yes, uh, oh, right. it's okay. Warren underscore chaos C H A O S, and uh, I tweet all the time. And every time I meet somebody big, I say how awesome they because are. Because you're a tweeter, because you have ADD. Well, I I tweet because I have ADD. <laughs> like like it's constant, and I retweet like I follow like every professional wrestler on the planet, including this guy over here. But you can't see he's off camera. <laughs> so guy off camera who has a Twitter account. You're followed by this man, and hopefully you at home start following War and Chaos.